Britain has a problem with illegal immigrants crossing the English Channel in little boats. I mean, obviously, we need to show compassion to these people who are fleeing terrible conditions in France. I mean, there's snooty waiters, there's dog poo on the pavement, there's appalling rock music. But we still need to stop these channel crossings because they're paying criminal gangs to do it. They're skipping the queue in front of other migrants who apply through proper channels. And mainly, it's bad because it's dangerous. 37 people drowned trying to cross the English Channel to get into Britain last year. So we need to dissuade people from risking their lives like this. Much of Britain has done its bit to help. Swindon and Middlesbrough have made themselves worse places to live than Mogadishu. And Sadiq Khan, the mayor of London, has ensured that London is more violent than Afghanistan. But it hasn't been enough to put people off. So the British government said that if you come across the channel illegally, we'll resettle you in Rwanda, which is a safe country with a booming economy, which should be perfect for anyone seeking a better life. But rich celebrities didn't agree. They saw an opportunity to virtue signal, and virtue signal they did. I mean, there are lots of pros and cons of immigration, which I'll look at in a minute. But first, let's look at the celebrity reactions. Prince Charles is an unelected state figurehead who's supposed to just open supermarkets, appear on plates, and shut his swan hole. But he thinks he's from a new political party called the Royal Family, apparently, and has criticised the government's policy of deporting migrants to Rwanda, calling the practice appalling. This clearly means that he thinks that open borders are good. So I've visited Prince Charles' primary residence, Clarence House. He's got six houses, by the way. Some of them are palaces. But I visited his main one to see if I could just stroll in. After all, it would be hypocritical of him to insist that we all live with open borders while he has very secure borders. Turns out he not only has very secure borders, but he's got guards armed with machine guns. Is this the way in for Clarence House? Yes. Oh, yes. wicked. Oh, I was just wondering if I could come in. Because Prince Charles said uh, we should have open borders, so I'm just wondering why we have open borders, but he doesn't. He's got like dudes with machine guns. He does indeed, doesn't he? He does indeed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm sure if you write to uh, Clarence House and ask for an appointment yeah. with uh, Prince Charles, he'll give you one and explain to you why you have open I admire your optimism. Yeah. I, think, I think he likes to have one rule for himself and one rule for plebs like me. I know he's got a big, he's got a big spiky border. He's got a secure border going around his garden. Yeah, it's the same with our houses, isn't it? We all have doors, and you know, we don't allow anyone just coming around. Exactly, so we do have doors. You have telling doors me that there's one house. rule for one and one rule for another in this country? Yeah, it seems like there is. <laughs> I think it seems. I think there is, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if I was Prince Charles, I wouldn't be like you know, telling other people what their rules should be if it contradicts what I'm doing myself. Yeah. But there's no chance of me getting an appointment with. Him. Uh, or Prince Andrew. I was going to ask if Prince Andrew wants to join my grooming gang. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, you never know. Right to him. He's at Windsor Castle. Yeah, it worked for Jimmy Savile. It did indeed. All right, cool. All well, right, then, Thanks for your time. You too. Take care. Look after yourself. Well, there wasn't much chance of me getting in there. The Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, criticised the decision, saying it's against the judgement of God. This is the same God, by the way, who let 37 migrants drown in the English Channel last year. So maybe we shouldn't leave things to God's judgement. Welby also called the plan heartless. Great to be lectured on morality by someone who was not only covered up for a paedophile while he was Dean of Liverpool, but also banned the victim of the paedophile from his cathedral. What is it with men and frocks and nonsense? Rwanda's Anglican leader, who is himself a refugee, slapped down Justin Welby, which probably gave Justin Welby a boner. Professional race baiter Femi Oluwole, I'm sorry if I mispronounced that name, but I genuinely think that is how it's pronounced. He said, Never forget that the people being sent to Rwanda for coming to the UK in boats across the channel have done more and risked more to be here than you ever have. All you did was tumble out of someone who happened to be on UK soil. So, I mean, if a burglar risks more to enter your house than you did, you should let him stay. Nazis risk more than Polish people to enter Poland in 1939, so they deserve it because they've, they've done more to show they want it. And this idea that British people have no claim to their land, would he say the same thing to Palestinians? Britain is a great country that everyone wants to come to because our ancestors fought for it and built it that way on the backs of their ancestors and we need to be custodians of this fragile oasis of peace and tolerance too. It would be great if people suffering under despotic failing regimes in Syria or wherever could do the same and overthrow their rulers and improve their country. Femi's comment is a real eye opener as to how the left view Britain and its people. And if Britain is as racist as left wing people say it is, why do they want to subject people from overseas to it? 
That's just cruel. Emma Thompson described the Rwanda plan as eye-wateringly mad. Emma is an Italian citizen. This is like someone in a different town complaining that you put locks in your doors. And I'm happy for Emma Thompson to have an opinion on British immigration policy if she has some skin in the game. Maybe she could move back here and put her daughter into care in Rotherham. When I bet if grooming gangs did target the posh kids of Guardian readers, it would actually be dealt with and it wouldn't be considered racist to notice. Gary Lineker lives in a big house with locked doors that he bought with money he made from selling crisps to fat children but he wants open borders too. He said, I just can't get my head around how people can treat their fellow human beings in this appalling way. I never expected to witness in this country. It's abhorrent. But it's surely humanitarian to stop people risking their lives to cross the channel. And Rwanda's a great country. And for every man we send to Rwanda, we take a genuine vulnerable refugee in return who genuinely needs our care and support and doesn't have £6,000 to give to a criminal gang to get across the channel. This plan will save lives. I wonder how many early deaths have been caused by the unhealthy snacks that Gary flogs. Look, regarding immigration, Britain is now a high immigration country. At the end of 2021, there were nine 9.6 million people living in Britain who are born overseas. That's the ones that the authorities actually know about. This is about 14.5% of the population. And last year, a million visas were issued to people seeking to come to the UK. Immigration is at an all-time high and we're pretty relaxed about it. There are many upsides to immigration. As the chart of public opinion shows, it's good for the economy, brings high-skilled workers and cultural enrichment such as tasty food. Although, to be honest, we've got the recipes, so... But we've also got to recognise the downsides. There's the suppression of working class wages, pressure on public services, rising housing costs and social disharmony due to culture clashes. For example, between indigenous British people who love to queue. And honestly, the reason the far left are so popular in the UK is because we love queuing so much. We want some sort of Soviet style system where we have to queue up to buy everything, including potatoes. But the people crossing the channel illegally can't wait their place in the queue. They're paying criminal gangs to help them jump the queue. And I hate to talk about nasty things such as terrorism and grooming gangs, but the failed 7-7 tube bombers were asylum seekers from Eritrea, Somalia, Ethiopia and Ghana. Obviously, most of the people coming in are good people who just want a better life for themselves, but how do you filter out the bad people? And there are some 25,000 grooming gang victims a year. I mean, never mind the old argument, immigrants take our jobs. Immigrants are taking our noncing. We have hard-working, homegrown British nonces who've invested in vans, in trench coats, in boxes of puppies, and they're having their noncing that should be theirs by dint of birthright taken away from them. It's getting so bad that some of our top nonces have to travel overseas to billionaires' islands to find victims. And there'll be people watching this who are like, Ooh, that's racist, you can't say that grooming gangs are formed of immigrants. Many of them were born here. Yeah, but I don't think these guys can trace their lineage back to 16th century Canterbury. All I'm saying is, British nonsense for British nonces. And it gets trickier because the substantial benefits of mass immigration are mainly enjoyed by the rich, like these celebrities who get cheaper house extensions, cheaper nannies and cheaper prostitutes. And the downsides fall on the working classes who see competition for jobs, for housing and for their prostitution. And the working classes are expected to do all of the integration and even move off land they've lived on for centuries to make way for new arrivals. If an Amazonian tribe was pushed off its land by settlers, leftists would be falling over themselves to protect this fragile, authentic culture and way of life. But cockneys are expected to clear off to Essex to make space for immigrants, and nobody calls for the preservation of indigenous culture in the Dagenham River Basin or to give UNESCO World Heritage status to Millwall football team. Anyway, I hope no more people drown in the channel, and I hope anybody who ends up in Rwanda under this plan has a great time there. If you've enjoyed this video, please send it to a friend in Calais. And if you'd like to support me making these videos, you can become a Patreon from as little as £3. That's one two thousandth as much as you'd have to pay a people smuggler to get you across the channel in a small inflatable boat. You can help me pay for my armed guards and get early access to these videos and a Patreon-only podcast with a criminal barrister and some other cool stuff. Anyway, thanks for listening. I've been Leo Kears. Bye. Bye-bye.